What's up everyone? It's Özgür from Digidemi. Today we'll talk about how to create the bullet time effect that I'm sure you know and love, I hope, from the film Matrix. This is where the time stops or slows down so that the camera can fly around the scene when things take place in slow motion and then at some point things click back in real time and everything continues as normal. Now, it's not too difficult actually to create this in Cinema 4D. There are a few things that you do need to know and that's what I'm going to show you in this tutorial. So let's learn. Right, so we'll start by creating a cube that we can then break apart. So let me start with that. And I'll go to my model mode so I can make this cube a little thinner that way. And maybe a little wider that way and maybe slightly taller as well here. And in order to allow this cube to be broken into smaller pieces, I'm going to create a Voronoi fracture and then drop the cube inside of this. And I want more pieces here, so I'm going to select the Voronoi fracture come down to sources and then select our point generator so I can increase the amount of points we have let's say from 200 to say 250 maybe a little more actually let's go for maybe 400 there you go and I'll also make this Voronoi fracture a rigid object so it starts falling down so if I right click go to bullet tags rigid body so if I go back to the beginning and play it that's what it looks like now now I'm going to rewind and I don't want these to fall down right away. So I'm going to select the tag, go to dynamics, and then change the trigger from immediately to on collision. So only when something collides into this, this becomes a dynamic object and starts falling down. Until then, nothing happens. If I press play, you see nothing happens. I'll go back to the beginning. So let's go and create an object that can collide into this. Let's maybe create a sphere. I'll move the sphere back and then maybe fly back and then slightly further here and I'm going to make the sphere a little smaller and if I make the sphere also a rigid object so that starts falling down as well now I don't want the sphere to start falling down I want this to shoot in this direction so there will be a positive Z direction if I select the tag of the sphere come down to dynamics and turn on custom initial velocity I can then increase the Z velocity that's the speed in this direction and then play it again. That probably won't be enough. Let's try. Yeah, it's not fast enough. So I'll go back to the beginning. Increase this a little more. Try again. Maybe a little more actually. Let's go for maybe 1700 or so. Let's see if that's enough. That's good enough. But it's going straight on the Z axis. And of course, because of gravity, it's being pulled down as well. So I want this to have an initial kick upwards as well. So I'm going to go and change this Y linear velocity from 0 to say 300 if I try it now that's a little better that's good but because the sphere is quite small compared to this object it doesn't quite go through it let me just fly to a different angle and then see it from here you see it kind of breaks the object apart but it doesn't fly through the object now one way to work around it would be to make the sphere bigger let me just show you so now it's got more density, so it can kind of fly through the object easily. Or, of course, if I make the sphere smaller, I can make this cube shorter or thinner, I should say. So if I make this quite thin, then the sphere can easily fly through this now. Or the third way would be to make this quite thick again. And then select the tag of the sphere. And then come down to its mass. And right now you see it says world density, meaning that it's using the actual size of this compared to the size of this to determine how strong this object is going to be. But if I change it from world density to the custom density, you can also change it to mass if you want to work in mass. I'm going to go to custom density and increase the density from 1 to let's say 5. Now this means the object's size won't be relevant anymore. It's just the density that we set here that will drive the strength or the density of this object. So if I now play it, it will easily go through this compared to what it was doing before. If I go back, if I make this denser, let's say if I set that to 15, if I play, you see it just goes through as if the wall can't even stop it. If I rewind, lower this down to let's say one again, and if I play, then it doesn't go through as easily. Using the custom density, you can use really small objects like this maybe, and if I increase the density to let's say 20, to break larger objects apart. If I now shoot through, 
you see that sphere goes through this. Whereas with the world density, this sphere just won't be strong enough. If I play, you see it doesn't even go through. It just bounces off that wall here. If I go back and play again, here's what happens. I'll go back, change the world density to custom density, change it to, let's say, 10, and then make our sphere a little larger. Play it again. So now it can go through easily. I actually want to create a slightly more explosive animation, so I don't want it to go through as easily. So I'm going to go back to the beginning, make this object a little larger, go back to the tag, and then change the density to be slightly less, let's say 3. So the fact that this is breaking the wall apart is not because of this custom density being so high, but because of the actual shape of the object being quite large. So if I play it now, that's more of an explosive collision. So I'll go back to the beginning. Let's see it from here. Yeah, that's more like it. I actually want the sphere to come from underneath, so when it hits this object, it actually explodes out towards the up Y direction as well. Right now, it's just kind of going through here, and we don't have too many pieces flying upwards. So I'm going to go back to the beginning, lower the position of this down, and then in the tag, I'll increase on the dynamics the Y linear velocity as well, to so let's say 550 or so. So it kind of goes diagonally first. And then because of the gravity, it gets pulled down. Let me play again. Like that. Maybe a little more actually on the Y. So let's say we go to 750. And then slightly stronger on the Z as well, say to 2000. Let's try again. That's more like it. But what I want to do now to create this bullet time effect is when the ball hits this wall, we want to freeze the time of the simulation. But of course, the timeline is going to continue moving, or the playhead here is going to continue to move. And then as the playhead moves, we can fly a camera around the scene. And when the camera comes to the final position, the simulation time can go back to normal again. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to use the letter G on the keyboard to advance forward by one frame at a time. Let's say around about here, I want to freeze or at least slow down the time of the simulation. And I can do this by pressing Ctrl D, or you can go to Edit Project Settings. And then in here, we go to Bullet. And then here we have something called the Time Scale. This is how fast the simulations are playing. 100% is real time. If I lower this down from 100% to, let's say, 3%, go back to the beginning and play, you see the animation takes place at 3% of the rate. That's a bit too slow. Let me stop the playback, go back and then maybe change it to 10%. So that's one-tenth of the original speed now. If I play now, you see it's much slower than 100%. And you can also freeze this. Let's say at this point, if you don't want this to continue playing, I can change it to zero. And the simulation will just be frozen. The playhead is moving, but the simulation is frozen on that frame. Let me stop, go back to the beginning. And I can, of course, keyframe all of these. Let me go and set this back to 100%. And I'll use G again to find the collision frame, let's say here. And I'm going to allow this to play for a couple more frames, let's say maybe until here. So that's frame 9. And at this point, I'm going to keyframe the time scale. I'll then advance forward by, let's say, 3 or 4 frames. So I'm going to press G a couple more times. And let's say at this point, I want the time scale to be, say, 3%, which I'm going to keyframe again. So if I now go back to the beginning and play, you see between those two keyframes, it will just go from 100% down to 3%, so that's a reduction of 97%, like that. And whilst this simulation takes place in slow-mo like this, I can fly a camera around to create the bullet time effect, and at any point I can re-keyframe this time scale to go to 100%, so the animation or the simulation continues at real time. So let's do that as well. I'm going to create a camera. I'll also create an arc on which the camera can fly. So let's pull back and maybe somewhere here, if I create an arc, make this quite large, and then change its plane to X and Z. So the camera can start here and fly all the way around. Let's maybe make this a little larger, say there. I'm gonna lift this up as well. And I'll rotate as well, so it's not quite flat on, cause this would be a 90 degree angle. This would be a 90 degree angle as well, so if I, Imagine looking at the scene from the perspective of this point, that's going to see it just from the side, whereas this point would see it just from the front like this. And I want to give this a little more of an angle like this. 
So I'm going to go and rotate this arc to let's say start here. And then it kind of sweeps across and goes past to this point here. So I'm now going to send this camera onto the arc by right clicking on it. And then I'll go to animation tags and I'll add the align to spline tag to it. And I can drag the arc as my spline path so that the camera can go to the beginning of that spline. I'll go back to the frame where the time runs slower. So if I go back, play again. Here is when I want the camera to start moving from point A to point B. So on the tag of the camera, I'll keyframe the position. I'll go forward, let's say to maybe here, to frame 75 or so. I'll change the position to 100%. I'll keyframe this again. So when I play, you see the camera flies from here to here, from 0 to 100%. And at this point, when the camera stops, I want the animation to continue at real speed. So I'm going to press Ctrl D again to go to my project settings. Keyframe the time scale at 3%. Go forward by a couple of frames, so I'm on frame 78, I'll press G let's say 5 times, so I'm on frame 83 now. I'll change this time scale from 3 to 100, and I'll re-keyframe this. So if I play again, you'll see that the camera flies, once the camera stops, the objects go back in real time again. Of course you see that the camera isn't pointing in the right direction, so I'm going to add a target to it, I'll create a null, let me just change the shape of this null from a dot to, let's say, a cube, and maybe a little larger as well. I'll right-click on the camera, animation tags, a target tag, and I'll drop this null as my target object, so the camera can always look at that null. If I now look at the scene through the perspective of that camera, if I now go back and play, here's what we have. That's looking good. I have these leftover pieces here. They stay there because there isn't anything that's kind of bouncing or colliding into these. So let's go and fix that as well. Let me go back to the beginning. I'm going to go frame by frame by pressing G. Now, at this point, I want the other objects, so these objects, to start being affected as well. Because right now, because none of these are touching those objects, they're not falling down. That's really an easy fix. If I go to the tag of the Voronoi fracture, I can keyframe the trigger now from on collision, meaning if nothing touches these objects, they will not fall down. I'll keyframe that, then go forward by one more frame, change it to immediately, and then keyframe again. So at this point, these will start falling down as well. If I continue to play, you see, they'll start falling down as well. Let's go back and do a real-time playback. And of course, we can turn off the colorization of these segments. If I go to Voronoi Fracture, under Object, I can turn off this Colorize Fragments option. And if I click outside to make sure that nothing is highlighted, I go back to the beginning and maybe change the focal length of the camera as well, so it's slightly wider. So if I select the camera, in Object, I change the focal length from 36 to, let's say, 24. If I play this again, I don't quite like how fast the objects continue to fall once the camera kind of settles in. So this fall here is a bit too fast, I think. I'll stop the playback. I'll go and update the keyframe that we had created. So I don't want the last keyframe to go to 100%. I want it to go to somewhere, let's say maybe about 80% or so. So for that, I'm gonna open up my timeline. Let me make a bit more space here. This last bullet keyframe is where it goes to 100%. I can go to the F-curve editor here, select the bullet, press H so I can see its keyframes. This last one, instead of 100%, can be, let's say, slightly lower down, say, maybe around here. That's about 80%. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe a little lower, actually. That's about 60% now. So if I go back to the beginning, press H here so I can see that graph. And if I play, it goes from 100% down to 3%, it remains at 3%, and it goes from 3% to about 60%. Of course, if you want this to be a little more gradual, you could separate these keyframes, like that, and then maybe here. And if I play again, 
goes there, and then they fall down. I think that's looking much better now. And that's how you can create the famous bullet time effect in Cinema 4D. Before you go, if you want to win a free, live and fully interactive course, you can enter our weekly prize draw, where you can win a 5-day course normally worth over $1,000. All you have to do is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon here, and cross your fingers. So don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.